And now it's time for a breath of fresh air. I'm joined by <laughs> Lisa Nesselson for our cultural interlude because it's Wednesday, of course, we're talking films. Now, you have just come in from um, the award ceremony for the 74th Louis de Luc Prize. What is that exactly? It's a big deal, but you can be forgiven for not ever having heard of it. Most French people have never heard of it. Believe it or not, it is to designate the best French film of the year. Two prizes are given for best French film of the year and the best French film by a first-time director. And what makes this prize credible, in addition to the very, very impressive list of people who have won it since 1937, is that the jury is made up exclusively of high-ranking career film critics who serve for life. So, unlike some film awards, you can be fairly certain that the people doing the deciding have actually seen all the movies that uh, would be eligible for a prize. We don't know that for sure, for example, with the Césars, which are the local corollary to the Oscars. The prize is named uh, for the early critic Louis de Luc, who died at age 33 in 1924. And if you want to dazzle your friends, he is considered the spiritual father of film criticism. So, according to this year's jury of 16 men and women, mostly men, uh, the best French film of 2016 is Une Vie, uh, a woman Woman's Life in English. It's a period drama directed by Stéphane Brisé. That this story has been filmed before, including by French director Alexandre Astruc, who is uh, himself uh, a previous recipient of this very award, but for uh, a different film. And uh, the director came to collect his prize, and he said he was planning to do Christmas shopping this afternoon. He'd completely forgotten about this, and the Louis de Luc was not on his list, but he was happy to accept it. Interestingly, this year, neither winning film was on the short list. The press was given a list of five finalists, but the two winning films weren't on it. That's because the jurors can add titles at their final gathering, which they began just a few hours ago, and I think that flexibility is kind of charming. It drives editors at TV and radio stations crazy, but, you know, Keeps it's a nice on their toes. Yeah. Yeah. So the best first film, a uh, prize added in 1999, went to a young female director named Maud Alpi uh, for her slaughterhouse drama in French, Gorge, Cœur, Ventre, Still Life in English. Now, this uh, next film, I don't know if it's going to win any awards. Maybe I shouldn't <laughs> say that because I haven't seen it yet, so don't be so judgmental. Um, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Is it <laughs> worth going out to see? <laughs> well, that's a trick question, right? Because absolutely nothing I say uh, is going to sway a single speck of stardust one way or the other. People who want to see this want to see it. People who don't, don't. Personally, I care more about Tinkerbell. I do believe in fairies. I do believe in fairies. <laughs> than I have ever been able to summon any interest whatsoever for any installment of this never-ending saga. But a great many people care deeply and are only too happy to feed the gods of the box office and of merchandising. So this clumsily titled film is a free standing episode, sort of situated uh, between episodes three and four, and it's full of characters you've never seen before, played by a cross-section of actors who sort of kind of represent different Earth contingents, such as, you know, the vast expanses of Asia, or people who happen to speak Spanish, and lots and lots of people with British accents. Uh, but it does have a kick-ass young heroine named Jin, and if Mads Mikkelsen was your screen dad, I mean, how could you help but grow up to be kind of cool, brave, and agile, and determined? And if people keep telling you to trust the Force, and you've been lucky enough to keep your force uh, symbolizing necklace, even though you're serving a prison term. I think that's uh, that's all you need to take on evil. Let's take a look. Okay, sir. Halik! Uh, you want to get out of here? Hey! Move at me! <laughs> Congratulations, you are being rescued. Please do not resist. Now, over the years, Star Wars has been described as a space opera. Is there any singing? <laughs> That's a legitimate question. Um, I considered breaking into the Hallelujah Chorus when it was finally over <laughs> with. Does that count? It's worth <laughs> noting that most people don't particularly like opera. You know, I think there's far fewer collectible Brunhilde dolls than there are Princess Leia dolls, if that's any indication. Now, most of the dialogue runs along these lines. Claire, secure this TV station and throw the master switch. Go, go, go. And the no-nonsense vehemence with which I say, go, 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 <laughs> automatically confers upon you 
all the talents you would ever need to secure this multi-story building and the hundreds of people who work here. Of course, you might have help from a comic relief robot. Uh, we just saw the one in this film at the end of that clip. The previous sidekick robots were small and compact. This one is tall and lanky. I actually like him quite a bit. And before, because the force is with him, you also might want to enlist the blind guy who's really, really, really good at eliminating his enemies, even though he can't see them. And if you stride purposefully when you're not shooting, um, then I'm confident that you can secure this facility. But if I say to our uh, viewers, <laughs> don't go, don't go, don't go. Uh, sadly, I know that in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> well, you've convinced at least one person. <laughs> I won't be going. Won't be going. <laughs> um, now to a film that's firmly rooted on our planet. It's called Manchester by the Sea. I have to say the title's not all that appealing. It doesn't sound all that special, but the critics loved it, I hear. Is it really that good? In a word, Yes, uh, this film is a jewel-like triumph of form and structure with excellent, excellent, excellent performance. I think if the exact same t story were told in linear, chronological fashion, it would still be affecting and touching, but it wouldn't flirt with brilliance, which this definitely does. It is supremely good storytelling. Grief happens to be a major component of the proceedings, and yet it is also frequently funny, this movie. So, when we first meet Casey Affleck's character, Lee Chandler, he's a hard-working but ornery janitor for some residential buildings outside Boston where something is always breaking down or the tenants always need something. He doesn't smile. He doesn't waste time on social niceties. He doesn't seem to have any friends. He drinks and gets into fights. Are we going to watch such a cranky guy for two hours and 17 minutes? Hell yes. <laughs> Here is a look at him in uh, a flashback in Happier Times. <laughs> So oh, sorry. God. Sorry, Ray. I, 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 I mean, I didn't think we were that Lee? loud. You want to get these f***ing pinheads out of my house, please? Yeah, I do. I mean, I really do. She can't talk to us that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, so Lee's permanently in a bad mood. Is it justified, though? You know that perky, positive expression, if life gives you lemons, then make lemonade? Well, life has not only given Lee lemons, it has also given him gaping open wounds and salt to pour into it, along with the lemon juice. If that sounds harsh, when we find out why exactly this guy is in a permanent bad mood, we get it. We absolutely get it. What befell Lee is something most people would never, ever recover from. Uh, but a family emergency requires him to make some decisions and arrangements that threaten his fragile personal balance, and I don't want to give anything away to s except to say that when you walk out of the theater, you walk out feeling enriched. And of course, in order to do that, uh, you have to walk into the theater in the first place, something I strongly, strongly suggest you do. So just to be clear, you prefer the Star Wars movie, right? <laughs> Roughly, yeah. And like this, this guy did too. All right, this one was already on my list. Now, top of the list. Thank you very much, Lisa. You're welcome.